Welcome Earl Maria grad class of 2023. What an exciting time in your lives. My name is Ms. Lowe and I'm one of the counselors in the school. Today, I'll be guiding you through a virtual course planning assembly. The goal of this assembly is to initiate the conversation and have you start thinking about what your grade 12 year would look like. Let's help you choose the classes that cater to your post-secondary plans. Let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that the lands on which we work, play, and learn are on the shared traditional territory of the Keitsi, Kwatlin, Semiamu, and other Coast Salish peoples. I would also like to acknowledge the well-established and special relationship between Earl Merritt Secondary and Semiamu First Nation. To begin, we'll talk about what are the requirements for your graduating class. Uh, we'll talk about the BC grad program, the numeracy assessment, as well as the literacy 10 and 12 assessment. So as we previously discussed, uh, in order to graduate, you will have need needed to have written your numeracy 10 and literacy 10 assessments. As well, in your grade 12 year, you'll need to have written your literacy 12 assessment. Uh, the other grad requirements for 2023 is that June 2023 grads should have completed their career life education, and this should have been done in grade 10. Uh, if you have not taken Career Life Connections 12 in grade 11, uh, you can take it or you will need to write CLC 12 next year. Um, so you'll need to take this course as a, to fulfill your graduation requirements. So 2023 grad requirements, what's the same? For you to graduate, you'll need to have 80 credits minimum at the grade 10 to 12 level, and each course is worth four credits. There's also 12 classes that you must take or 48 required credits, and you are also um, need to take 28 elective credits or seven courses that are electives at the grade 10 to 12 level. As a reminder, in order to graduate, you also must have written your Numeracy 10 assessment, your Literacy 10, and your Literacy 12 exams. So this screen shows us what the required courses you need to have uh, in order to graduate for both the English and French Immersion program. Each of the courses that you take has to be completed by our grads in your grades 10, 11, or 12 year. And in order to make sure that you have all of these classes, you can check on MyEdBC on your transcripts. So please do make sure to check what courses you have so far and what courses you still require or are incomplete. Uh, and if you're in doubt or not sure, please do check with your counselor for more information. These are the 48 required credits or the 12 classes that you need to have taken in order to meet the grad program. So here's looking ahead and planning for your grade 12 year. For both the English and French immersion program students, the required course that you have to take in grade 12 is English Studies 12. For students in the French immersion program, you'll also need to take the Francais Long 12 class. All the other courses that you choose are electives, and you'll be choosing them based off of your post-secondary goals. So all grads will want to make sure and pay attention that you have had at least one Fine Arts or 80 ST class in grades 10, 11, or 12. Over the years, you may have already taken this course requirement in grade 10 or 11, Examples of the ADST and fine arts classes include art, business, computers, drama, food, textiles, music, tech ed, and stats. So once again, in order to meet your grad requirement, you will need to have taken at least one fine arts or ADST class in your grade 10, 11, or 12 year. Is a second language required? 
Often we have students asking if language 12 is required for university. It's not a required course for graduating high school or for university. However, a language 11 credit is necessary. So what would be an advantage to taking a language 12? For those students taking a look at going into university in the Bachelor's of Arts, many of these programs require you to have a language 12 or they require you to have a first year language when you get to university. In some cases, taking a language 12 can satisfy this credit and that means that you'll have the course completed in high school instead of going to post-secondary to take it. This would be an advantage to you as you won't have to pay for the course at university and as well it'll free up space in your post-secondary course selections in your first year. So please do check if a second language is needed in your post-secondary studies. And of course another reason to consider taking a language 12 is that it would be great for travel and for cultural understanding. For social studies, you will require either a Socials 11 or 12 credit in order to graduate. The choices include explorations in Social Studies 11, and we also have 20th Century World History 12, BC First Nations 12, Theory of Economics 12, Human Geography 12, Law Studies 12, Physical Geography 12, and of course Philosophy 12. Once again, you're required to take one of these classes in order to satisfy graduation requirements. However, if you're applying to social studies or business program in post-secondary, you may need to take more than one socials to meet the academic requirements for post-secondary applications. So here's a chart that shows you the different routes in the math department. The math department offers many different options. You'll want to look at what your post-secondary requirements are and make sure that they align with the appropriate math class you're taking. You'll also need to make sure that you're taking a suitable class based on your skill level and based on what you took in Math 11. If you're planning to apply to science or a business program in post-secondary, you might also want to consider taking Calculus 12, AP Calculus, uh, in addition to your Pre-Calc 12 as it enhances your post-secondary applications. Again, please be really thoughtful about the level of math you are taking. You don't want to be in a class that is beyond your skill level as it will impact the mark that you achieve. So this is another screen that shows you in more detail the options we provide in the math department. It also shows you what we suggest to have as a minimum prior to taking these classes. So we offer calculus and AP cal calculus, and before you take these courses, you should have a minimum of 86% in your Math 12 pre-calc course. We also offer statistics, and this is also a highly academic course, so you need to be strong in your math background. Uh, math 12 pre-calculus is a challenging and demanding course, and you should have at least a 73% in Math 11 pre-calculus. And we also offer a Math 12 Foundations, and it's for students who have passed Math 11 Pre-Calc or Math 11 Foundations. So, once again, Math 12 is not a required course for graduation. However, you'll want to check your post-secondary requirements to see which level of math you need for the programs that you're applying to. We also have many district partnership programs. Information on any of the programs on this list is available in the Career Education Office on the third floor. It's a really good idea if you're curious and considering any of these programs after high school to go up to talk to Ms. Bravenick. There's a possibility that you can get started on working towards your post-secondary goals in your grade 12 year.
So here are some routes that you can take to get credits from now until the end of your grade 12 year. Uh, there's summer school and Earl Maria is a summer school site. Information about summer school usually comes around spring break and we will be advertising as soon as it becomes available to us. SAIL is an online distance program. Uh, they offer a whole series of classes that you might want to consider as an online option. Uh, night school is offered at Queen Elizabeth and they offer classes for each semester. Finally, in our community, we have the South Surrey White Rock Learning Center that offers some options for our students. Other places that you can get credits. So we have some students that may be taking a language elsewhere or taking an online language program. There is an opportunity to challenge the language. More information will come in September. We'll make an announcement to pick up an application form and drop it off in the counseling department. So if you're interested in this, keep your eyes and ears open in the fall. If you're involved in external sports, uh, doing other languages, music, dance, scouts, guides, life-saving, ICBC drivers, ed, boating, and plenty more, uh, if you're involved in these, you might be eligible for external credit. These programs usually give you a certificate at the end of the course, which you can now share with your counselor to obtain external credits if it meets the requirements. Again, please see your counselor if you have further questions. This is a super exciting time in your life where you get to consider your goals after high school. There's a lot of information out there and we're here to help you navigate through all of it. Please discuss with us and your families for what is going to be the best route for you to choose. You may choose to go to a college and do a bridging type of program. Uh, this means that you can transfer to a university after a couple of years at community college. You might also want to choose or you may want to choose to move on to a technical school like BCIT or Kuala Polytechnic University where they offer apprenticeship diploma and certification programs. Another option you can consider is taking the university degree route. Or you might want to choose to take a gap year to work or to travel. If you have questions and want to discuss your options and choices, please make an appointment to see your counselor. We're here to help support and navigate through all the different information that exists out there. For some college, polytechnic universities, and technical schools, um, not only do you need to have a high school graduation, you might also need to be above the age of 19. Some programs also have specific prereq courses that are required, so it's really important that you check online for the latest and most up-to-date information. University admissions. A lot of our universities will have approved list of courses that are necessary to get into their, their programs. Uh, courses are different for each university or institution and they need to be researched online. So please do make sure to double check for your program what courses that you need and make sure that you fulfill them. University admissions offices can also be contacted directly for more up-to-date information. Plan, plan, plan. We can't emphasize this enough. It's really important that you take the time and consideration in making your course selections and requests. We really want you to take the time to do this and make your choices wisely. How we decide our courses that will be taught next year depends on the classes you select in the next few weeks. So it's just really important that you do pick the classes that you want um, so that we can run those classes. Please do take the time to research and to make sure that you have checked the post-secondary program requirements and that you will have what you need when you're ready to apply to those programs next year. Do talk to your parents, parent or custodian, or sit down and have a conversation with them to do the planning together. We don't want you to be left scrambling for a course or looking for left without a course for next year. 
So please do make sure you plan and select the courses that you want. So researching into post-secondary requirements and programs. A really helpful tool for you to take a look at would be the Education Planner. There's also other resources such as the Student Transcript Service, which we will discuss more in your grade 12 year. Obviously, you can also take a look at the individual post-secondary websites. And something that you've been using since the beginning of high school is My Blueprint. So these resources there are very handy and helpful in planning and researching into your post-secondary requirements. It's important in your grade 12 year to start considering, if you haven't done so already, to get involved in some extracurricular activities such as clubs and teams as well as volunteering in the school and or community. These will help you in your applications towards scholarships as well it would also look really nice in your post-secondary applications. Uh, a, a tip that we have in the counseling department is to create a file that will and start collecting um, your reference letters and certificates in it and as well to put a really good and strong resume into that scholarship file. At Earl Marriott, our scholarship advisor is Ms. Canino. She'll be there to navigate and help you through applying for scholarships as well as letting you know what is out there. In your grade 12 year, at the beginning of the year, keep your eyes and ears open for announcements about when they'll have scholarship meetings. So here's our timeline for our course planning month. Today, February 2nd, is when all of us are having our grade assemblies, uh, all the grade 8s to 11s, and your course planning sheets are distributed. So that's what we're listening to right now. Uh, from February 3rd to February 18th, grades 9s, 10s, and 11s uh, will be able to access their MyEd portal online and make your course requests. If you have any questions or concerns, you don't know any, you don't know about the classes you're taking, you don't know about the course description, or you're just having tech issues, please email your counselor and we'll help you out as best as we can. So on the Earl Marriott website, we do have a course planning site available for you. This is really important in terms of helping you figure out what courses you want to take. The course catalog will go over the classes that you will want to take and give you a more clear description of them. So this is the course planning sheet that all students will be receiving to help plan for their upcoming year. This version is the grade 11 into grade 12 course planning sheet for the English program. So if you notice, everybody needs to take English 12 at the start. So you can choose between English Studies 12 or English First Peoples 12. Uh, if you didn't choose Socials 11, uh, you will need to pick a Social Studies uh, from these eight courses. And if you didn't choose Career Life Collect Connections last year or in your grade 11 year, you'll need to take Career Life Connections 12 in the Capstone Project. From this, there's also required electives 12s that you need to take. So please take at least three additional grade 12 classes to satisfy your grad requirements. You can also take an additional social studies 12 to count towards one of these classes. And then finally, there's open electives for you to choose. Um, these electives can be anything from grade 10, 11, and 12. And you can find that on the MyEd online course selection site. Finally, this course planning sheet will also ask you to tick off, if you would like, um, a study. So students in grade 12 can select one study period for their grade 12 year. And sorry, on the side, there is also a ninth course that's available for students, uh, Jazz Band 12. On the back side of your course planning sheet, these are a list of the different electives that you can choose from. Please double check once again your post-secondary requirements. Some of you might need to take certain classes to fulfill them. Um, and on top of that, if you want to have more information, you can go to the course catalog and to get a description about each of those classes. So 
So this is the same course planning sheet, except for the French immersion version uh, for grade 11 students going into grade 12. The main difference is that uh, you will have to take a Francais Long 12 class, which means that your required electives, uh, your required grade 12 electives, you will only need to choose two rather than three. Um, so just go through the sheet and tick off what applies to you. And this is the backside of the French Immersion course planning sheet. Same thing, this is just a list of electives that could potentially run based off of enrollment. If you'd like to go over the video again, or like to discuss it with your family, the video will be made available on our course planning webpage on the Earl Marriott website. Along with this, all our different pieces of information, such as the course, uh, course planning guide, the graduation program information, will also be made available on this page. So how do we submit your courses? You need to log on to MyEdBC first. If you forget how to access it, you can just Google MyEd and just click on MyEdBC. Once you get onto MyEdBC, you can log in with your student number and password. If you forgot your password, you can retrieve it by using the I forgot my password button. If you, that still does not work and you're having trouble accessing MyEd, you can go to the front office and they'll help you there. Once you log in, it'll take you to this generic screen and what you want to do is go into the My Info section, which will take you to this page here. Double check your details that everything is accurate. And what we'd like you to do is click on requests. Before you begin requesting your classes, this will pop up on your next page. And it's just a synopsis of what we've gone over today, uh, the classes that you need to take or what you have taken already in order to meet your graduation requirements. It will then take you to a page that says primary requests. For each of the choices that you make, if there is an arrow next to the course, that means that there's a drop down menu for you to choose more classes for that particular category. By the end of your course requests, you should have eight classes under your primary requests. The one course that you requ are required to take, once again, is your grade 12 English course. Under alternate requests, please make sure you pick two more alternate electives that are not the same as your primary requests. After you finish creating your course requests, there is a button on the bottom left of the page that says post. Click on this to save and to submit your requests. We went through a lot of information today. On our website, you can get more information regarding our planning guide, which is the sheet that you have in front of you today. Uh, you can go over the course catalog, the timeline, which you also talked about in our presentation, and the sample planning sheets, which you have in front of you as well. There is also the presentation if you'd like to review it again, as well as the student portal instructions on how to make your course requests. If you have any questions or you're not sure, you can come down, see us and the counseling department and we'll help you out. So questions. This is the last part of our assembly. Uh, we'll be logging in shortly to take in live questions from our current grade 11 students. We're really excited to be working with our grad class of 2023. Uh, if you leave this presentation feeling a little bit overwhelmed, as there is a lot of information to take in, remember we, the counselors, are here to help you and we really want to help you obtain the best year yet at Earl Marriott. So don't be afraid to email us, um, contact us, make an appointment, and we'll help you through any questions you have. Thanks for listening and I look forward to hearing from you in our Q&A session.